What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we are ending off the 2022 NFL mock draft season with one of my big boards and a predictive mock today. So be sure to check that out. If you guys are new, feel free to stick around, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff because I post content like this all the time. Already excited for 2023. And if you guys are too, already put up a 2023 mock. Without further ado, I want to give you a look at my top 100 picks. There are not 100 picks by top 100 big board. There is one guy who still deserves to be moved around, and I'll explain why when we get there. So starting off for number 100, we got Zachary Carter here. I think he's at edge at best, 285 pounds. I just He's really versatile. The problem is he hasn't put it together yet, and it's because they just don't know where to use him. I think that he could find it out in the NFL draft or in the correct NFL scheme. Draft range is where I could probably see them going. I could see him going probably as high as the early third if the team really sees him as an upside edge, but he could be falling quite a bit. He is a very athletic dude for his size, though. So definitely keep an eye out for Zach Carter. Pierre Strong Jr., Damian Pierce, James Cook, bunching the running backs together. All of them are phenomenal in their own right. Pierre Strong has a very large upside as a very fast running back, home run hitter. Damian Pierce is a lot more built as like an every down back. Uh, even though he only had 100 carries this last season, if I'm not mistaken, like the workload's the only big issue, but he can block, he can hit people hard. I definitely like what Damian Pierce can bring. James Cook, obviously, is James Cook. Uh, you guys have seen him plenty of times. Could be going as high as the Kansas City Chiefs second round pick. The draft range is about estimated. Again, it's not exactly to the pinpoint position, but like, again, this is probably a solid range to see them go. Cam Jurgens could be going as high as 50. Uh, has his own beef jerky company. Big riser for me. Definitely extremely athletic center. Uh, Greg Dolchich, you know, God only knows where the hell he's going to go. But a lot of teams like him. And he's a very, very, very talented tight end. Someone who might, should be probably moved up on my board. But, you know, when all is said and done, there's only a certain amount of players that can be in the top 100, top 150. So glad that he made the cut. Bo Melton, one of my favorite dudes as a sleeper in this class, could be going as dead. He could be in like a seventh round pick. Very small. Isaiah Spiller, really good contact balance back. Jelani Woods, I mean, we all know how freaky he is. Best RAS score ever for a tight end, which is absolutely awesome. And then Cam Taylor Britt, really solid zone cor cover corner. Now going from 90 to 80, we got Evan Ingram out of LSU. I really like his ability to start day one as a really mean run blocker. And apparently he's actually pretty immovable as a pass blocker as well. I like what Ed Ingram brings. I think he's actually very underrated. Darian Beavers is next. Just, I mean, he graded out as a third rounder to me, but at the same time, I mean, this is actually guys who probably are in that third round range. Uh, definitely somebody who is not on the upside side. If you need someone who could be a big dude who can add pass rush, that's probably going to be your best case scenario with him. Marvin Leal, God only knows where he's going to be. I had him actually graded as like a top 15 player as an edge rusher at the start of the year, and he just stopped doing that and he's not as athletic as he was so uh, i hope he gets his career back on track the probability of that is not as high as i would want to be wandale another guy who's really talented could, he played running back his freshman year as well i think that he could be going as high as maybe like chiefs pick but i mean the chances of that are pretty low but he's super gadgety and we're in a very gadgety nfl could definitely see him going higher than where i have him ranked josh williams is one of my favorite dudes in the draft i could be seeing him go as high Maybe not 65, maybe 66, whoop de doo But uh, yeah, he's out of Fayetteville State, really talented corner, six foot two, 200 pounds, and he was a baller at the Senior Bowl. Definitely somebody to watch out right there. Kenneth Walker, I have him lower than most, but again, I do think that he is in, his, in a class of his own with Brees Hall in a class of his own. There's obviously a top two here. Zion McCollum, obviously uh, he's a freak. I think he scored, he might have scored a 10 RAS score as well. Guys just built perfectly for the NFL. Very raw still, but, you know, I think that if a team takes him, like the Patriots in the second, I don't think that'd be a bad pick at all. Nick Benito's been getting some love. He's just scheme-specific, so can't really have him that high on my board. John Mechie as well. Probably should have put John Mechie the third. whoop de doo again. Uh, but, again, super solid player, high floor, probably lower ceiling, not extremely athletic, not extremely great at anything, but pretty solid at a lot of things. Jamari Sawyer, super versatile. Channing Tindall, I've been hearing he might even be getting more love than the Kobe Dean. 
Going from 79 to 70, we got Carson Strong here. Uh, I think that he is still being a little bit underrated, actually. A lot of people are saying he's going to be potentially – I mean, he could be falling out of the draft if his medicals don't clear out. Kirby Joseph, obviously, I've been a big fan of him. Excellent safety out of Illinois. Just was really, really talented at senior bowl as well. Marcus Jones doesn't need an introduction. I think he had nine return touchdowns in college. Love him to death. Uh, Abe Lucas, he's been hinted at being one of the best right tackles in the class, according to basically how many teams brought him in for a top 30 visit. I have him rated, I, he might be rated a little bit higher than this. He has a 69.0 grade, pretty nice. Uh, but that means that he is listed as a very early third rounder. There's just some really talented dudes that I couldn't disrespect too much, like Dylan Parham uh, definitely should be going in the top part of this draft. Uh, he's improved a lot. I'll admit he's improved a lot. Calvin Austin, I love him to death. Uh, definitely a really talented dude, but I cannot see him going anywhere near the second round because even though Tutu Atwell was a pick there, only one team wanted Tutu Atwell there. Josh Pascal, a uh, guy who has, he has crazy range. Uh, I, I love him on the inside actually more than the out, but we'll see what happens. I think he dropped weight. So I think that his versatility and his upside is ridiculous. Same thing with Drake Jackson. He actually gained weight though. But I've been hearing some weird rumors. Again, it's from his freaking agent. I don't really give a damn. But we're still going to include that in the range. I think Drake Jackson still could be that dude in the first round. Brandon Smith, he's a freaky athlete. Logan Hall, I put 31 to something. I would say 31 to 63. I really do think that if he's there for um, the Bengals at the end of the second, it's probably going to be where he goes. But Roger McCreary's next, as long as Kyler Gordon, both guys who are undersized. I think Kyler Gordon just has a little more upside, and there's not many super talented zone corners. So I think Kyler Gordon might be a little bit higher value because of that. Christian Watson, he's a super gadgety player. Again, his deep threat is his deep speed is real, like you see it on tape, but just again, not a complete wide receiver, really bad drop issues. Trevor Penning, uh, that's probably the big one. Everybody loves Trevor Penning. I just don't have him high on my board. Terrible leverage. Um, he's going to get a ton of holding calls if he's not getting driven back into the quarterback by dudes who are 100 pounds lighter than him. Not a very big fan of Trevor Penning, but I do understand his upsides there. Trey McBride, again, I'm not a huge fan of tight end value unless you're an actual elite tight end. I uh, really do like him still. I think he could be going as high as pick 33. Perry on Winfrey, a guy who has crazy pass rushing upside, Christian Harris, super raw athlete, but definitely is built to be an NFL linebacker. Nick Cross, one of my favorite dudes in the draft. Could we see him be drafted highly if uh, you start seeing the safeties come off the board? Martin Emerson, you know, just a lot of teams are pretty low on him, but I do think his abilities in zone are going to be coveted. And then Quay Walker is as high as 25 in the draft. Not there yet with him. Bernard Ryman, another guy who I'm not there with yet. I just, he's older. Does, is not very polished, uh, just was not very good at the senior bowl. Cam Thomas, if he gets his ass in shape, has first-round talent. Troy Anderson is an amazing leader. I love him, and he's one of the best athletes. He comped to Ryan Shazier when uh, people looked at his pure athletic numbers. Kingsley Anagbari is a guy who I think is going to be going later than I have him, more of one of my guys, which is weird because it used to be like top 15, you're taking Kingsley. Zach Tom, that's another one of my guys. Me, Brett Coleman, I think as well as PFF, we all love, um, spoiler alert, we all love Zach Tom right there. I think that he could be a top end left tackle. He's pretty comparable to Charles Cross in terms of size. Nick, Nicholas Petit Ferrer is a guy who I think is going to be way under drafted. Saw him again. I really fell in love again. Guy has a lot to love about him. Trent McDuffie, uh, yeah, just I watched him again. I moved him up like 10, 15 spots. It's just, it's hard to be able to evaluate a corner who doesn't get targeted. And it's not like he had very many coverage reps there at Washington. A lot of teams that they were playing against ran heavy. Uh, George Pickens obviously has a huge range, but good X build. Uh, Tariq Woolen, you know, six foot four, four two six. Chad Muma, extremely athletic, solid tight, uh, solid linebacker right there. Jalen Tolbert is one of my guys as well. I do love what he brings to the table. Bailed out his South Alabama quarterback many times. David Ojabo. Would have been higher if it weren't for that Achilles tear because he's still like you're losing valuable development time. Uh, Andrew Booth Jr., guy who I'm a lot lower on. I've heard he's not going to be going in the first, but you just never say never. Andrew, uh, you got Sean Ryan next, another one of my guys. I think he's going to be an amazing offensive guard, and I don't think people are evaluating him enough as a guard. Boy, Mafe and Sam Williams, both athletic freaks, a little bit older, but. You know, they bring a lot to the table. Sam Williams did really well in the SEC as well with, I think, 61 pressures. 
Uh, Desmond Ritter, Kenny Pickett, bunched them together. Uh, I actually have a lot worse grade on Desmond Ritter, but you know I do understand there are some things that NFL teams like. So uh, I'm going to be putting him a little bit higher based on quarterback value. Kenny Pickett, he's just a high floor dude who has some. He actually has some pretty poor qualities to him as well. Pretty poor processing at moments. Zion Johnson, guy who I'm a bit lower on personally. Uh, I might be bit in the ass for this one. This one might be like, I'll like rewatch the tape again by season time. I might like him more, but I just didn't see it. I didn't see it the way that a lot of people did. And I might want to move him up a little more again. Dax Hill's next. I think he's pretty solid. Bunched with Joquan Brisker. It's a good safety class at the top. Falls off tremendously. My Jai Sanders, another really talented dude who people just are, sh- are totally sleeping on. Did test as well as everybody wanted to, but the tape is there. You see it. Jameson Williams, this is the guy I said is going to probably be brought up my board quite a bit. I don't have a Z ranking, uh, Z scale. So the grade is an X. He's going to be number 37, and that makes total sense because he's built to be a Z. So that's on me for not continuing to develop my grading scale, but just got to let you guys know that there's no hate towards Jameson Williams. I think that in the right role, he's going to be a big game breaker. Brees Hall next. I love Brees Hall to death. I think he'd be going up to number 25, maybe even number 23. That's a really risky one, but... Definitely keep that in mind. Chris Alave, uh, again, I just didn't really think he was that spectacular. He was pretty solid all around, though, and I think he's going to be a good number two. Matt Corral, uh, again, I think they could be going as high as Pittsburgh, but pretty solid quarterback. Jalen Pitchery, I actually had him graded as my number two safety in the class, but uh, he's a slot corner at the end of the day. Can't rate him into the first with that. Sky Moore, I uh, really love his potential there. He's a really talented route runner. Uh, Good build as well. Leo Chanel needs no introduction. Really talented, big ass linebacker with a crazy motor. And then Lewis Seen, he graded out very highly. So I really like Lewis Seen as well. Kenyon Green is next. Definitely like what he brings to the table. And I think he should be a left tackle if he gets his ass in shape. Devontae Wyatt and Travis Jones bunched together. Devontae Wyatt's the better talent now, but Travis Jones has so much potential. I cannot deny that he might be one of those game breaking defensive tackles. Uh, Devin Lloyd, Brian Asamoah. So I know that I'm going to be shit on for Brian Asamoah, but I just absolutely loved him to death. I know he's going to be going later, but he really was special to me when I watched him. Devin Lloyd's super solid as well, though. Uh, Alec Pierce, another one of my guys. I think that he's phenomenal. Six foot three, almost six foot four, run a four, four, one, if I'm not mistaken. And he can run routes extremely well. Uh, bailed out Desmond Ritter a lot. I really do think Alec Pierce is the only reason why we're talking about Desmond Ritter. Arnold Ebiketti, uh, another really talented, high ceiling, high floor player, man. I think that people are underrating him. He's a little bit older, but there's a lot of these edges that people are saying are high ceiling edges that are going to be 24 in their rookie year. So they've already had their breakout. Nicobe Dean, super slept on. Love him to death. Big fan of Nicobe Dean. Sam Howell in there as well. Again, if you have time to develop him, he's going to pan out for you. Traylon Burks, he's very scheme specific, but I think that he's going to be a baller. Jahan Dotson is next. A big fan of Jahan. Uh, love him to death. I really do think that he belongs on a team in the NFL, and I think he's going to stick to a starting roster for his entire career. I just love Jahan. Tyler Smith, this is another one of my guys. I think that he's going to be an offensive guard for a while, and I think that's why I have him at 18, because I think he's going to make a really good day one impact at guard. As an offensive tackle, he needs some time to develop. Kyra Elam and Jermaine Johnson, both the guys who I've been really high on since the beginning. You guys obviously know that. I used to put Jermaine Johnson to the Eagles at pick like 18 or something like that when uh, everybody had him in the like third or the second. I love Jermaine Johnson. He's gotten a lot of hype, though. I can't be putting him up in my top 10. Kyra, really talented corner. Same thing with Derek Stingley. Uh, Derek Stingley, we just haven't seen it for two years, so I can't be putting him that highly because of that. Malik Willis, again, highest ceiling quarterback at a very high-level position, uh, high-impact position. Jordan Davis, he's just a freak. Same thing with Trevon Walker. Like, same thing with Drake London as well, and Kyle Hamilton. There's not many dudes who just get built like those guys. Obviously, the top two, Jordan Davis and Walker, tested out a lot better than the other two. But going on to my last of the top 10, you got Garrett Wilson. I think that he could be going as high as the Jets pick. Probably he doesn't get past the Saints if he ends up falling. Tyler Linderbaum in there as well. Could If we talk about PFF, they say the farther away from the ball, the more scheme specific you come, you're right on the ball. So I think that a team like the Ravens might be like, you know what? His talent's good enough. So we could definitely see that happen. Akema Kwanu could be still the first pick. I don't think he will be, but... He will never get past the Giants at five. Charles Cross probably starts with the Giants at five. If you see Neil as well as 
uh, Cross as, as well as um, Buggin, Neil as well as Aquanu taken by pick five. Then you got George Carl Loftus here. I think that he's probably going to be falling out of the, um, the top half of the first, which sucks, but you know, it is the way it is. I think he's talented. KT has a crazy ceiling, could still see him to the Lions. Lance are line just put up his mock and he's still at number two. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, love him to death. I don't think he gets past pick two. And then Evan Neal, obviously one of my favorite guys in the draft. Can't see the top two teams taking him, but would love to see him on a roster being able to be utilized in the way he should be. And last but not but least, uh, last but not least, Sauce Gardner. Love him to death. My number one player in the class. I don't think that he gets past the Giants at seven, if that is the case. I don't know if he gets past six or five, if not four. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.